<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Training for Life Redeemed. I'm your host Dan and as always I am with my dad David Jackson and we are working our way through the book of Matthew. Today we're up to chapter 5, we're going to begin the Sermon on the Mount, Dad, and the Sermon on the Mount gives a bit of context for it. We're Jesus is doing ministry in Galilee at the moment, and then we go into this Sermon on the Mount, where he goes up on a mountain and just starts preaching. Starts talking. People have this <laughs> perception that he's there with you know, thousands of people in front of him, and he's up on this huge hill with them all, kind of like a Moses scene. Yep. <laughs> uh, can you give us a little bit of context, and then tell me why there are so many blessed art thous throughout this <laughs> first little introduction to the Sermon on the Mount? Yeah, not quite blessed are the cheese makers. <laughs> yeah. um, Okay, so he's done a tour. This is his, his opening game, but he's done a tour of Galilee, uh, taken uh, the the central group. He's picking up, you know, he's picked up five guys. We're not sure how many more he's already picked up. But there's been lots of people who've been baptised, who believe in him and are following him. Uh, and then there's the crowds, all these masses of people who've come to be healed. And at some point, he says to the disciples, let's get out of here and heads up a hill somewhere um, northwest, probably, of Capernaum. And they get up there where they can have a bit of peace and quiet, and he sits down and he says, right, you've seen all the action and the power of the kingdom of God, all the healings and so forth. Now let me sit down and explain to you what a difference it makes when God rules as opposed to when Satan rules. So under the rule of sin and death, everything falls apart we hurt each other and break it, everything up. Now that the king has come and we're reversing all of that, we're undoing the damage, this is the impact that it's going to have on you because you've got to now become part of the solution, not the problem. And for that to happen, your attitude's got to change, uh, your head's got to get on straight, you've got to get the truth about reality, and then you've got to go out and practice it. So we're going to start by telling you the good news about what happens when you change your attitude and you come on board with Jesus. Okay. So all the people who are blessed are those who come on board with Jesus and follow him, yeah. basically. Yeah. This is the, So he's taken his disciples, not the crowd. Yeah. Eventually the crowd catches up. <laughs> <laughs> um, where'd he go? Where'd he go? But we pull the disciples away, the committed people, the people who believe, and we teach them, now what have you got to do? Now that you're converted... What do I do? So if you go to the end of Matthew's Gospel, um, the commission is to go into all the world and make disciples. You dunk them when they repent and believe, mm. and then you teach them to obey all that I've commanded you. So the learning happens after the commitment. Um, and this is now the first example we have of Jesus sitting down, um, doing the content, not just the action. Yeah, and it is, for me, I think there is an element of linking back i mean matthew likes to link things back into israel's history and all the things ways that jesus is kind of like israel and reliving israel and so there's yeah. part of me that looks at this and goes it's kind of like moses on mount sinai jesus on yep. the mountain um giving this talk and in covenants i think there is this kind of format of you know there are the blessings that come if you obey there's the curses that come if you don't yep. uh we don't go straight into the curses at this point no they'll wait <laughs> but <laughs> we've got the blessings here to, to start us off to get us feeling good yeah uh then jesus goes into then talking about being the soul of the earth being the light in yep. the on that you don't hide right uh and concludes i don't know if it's concluding of this section of the sermon or what but he, he then t talks about how he didn't come to abolish the law. Yeah. To, he actually came to fulfill the law. And actually, I know Paul talks a lot about Jesus being the end of the law, and people often interpret that as <laughs> it meaning the law is now finished and abolished, essentially. Yeah. But really, I, I know that word telos, which is often used, is, yeah. is actually just like the end of a pencil, type the end of it. It's like the finishing of it. Yeah. yeah so Jesus has come to finish the law, to fulfill it and, and have it, complete i yeah. guess and so can, can you tell us a bit about this why have we got salt why have we got light why are we well explicitly stating that we're not getting rid of the law the big contrast i think and this is where evangelical christians have to sit up and look in a mirror and look at the text again our first reaction to hearing the word law is to say oh i'm not under the law i can ditch the whole thing paul said it's okay um 
and we like that because it means it gives us permission to do whatever we like. Um, but Jesus comes at it at a really different angle. He starts off these blessings that he's pouring out in the blessed hours here in those first few verses. He's talking about gentleness, meekness, self-control. He's talking about peacemakers. He's, he's talking about a changed heart that isn't out to see what I can get away with, uh, that isn't out to, to build you know, a religious life that's all about me. Um, so it, it's this sudden lose my sense of entitlement, lose my sense of you know, all my rights, and just come down and say, Jesus is Lord, I've made a mess of life, how do I put this mess back together? And humble, gentle, meek, kind, peacemaking, merciful, these are the changes of attitude. Now, bring that to read your Old Testament. Mm. And when you come to read the Old Testament, it's not a bunch of random rules. It is God telling you what lights his eyes and what breaks his heart. Uh, and God doesn't change. So whatever, wherever you hear of, of God saying, this is bad, this is good, that doesn't change, Old Testament, New Testament. What's changed is that at, Jesus has demonstrated that he perfectly fulfilled, he kept the whole, he reflected accurately the whole character of God in everything he said and did. And then he turned around and paid for the fact that we didn't. And so now we are able in Christ to start to learn to get it right. And so as we go back to the Old Testament, we're asking a different question. What would put a sparkle in the eyes of my Heavenly Father? Mm. When, what, what would I do that would say, you got it right, son? <laughs> you know, that, that uh, looking for the Father's approval takes me back to the Old Testament and says, what broke his heart? What instructions did he give? Here he is rescuing a people out of Egypt and saying, you know, that was, that was slavery and bondage and death to babies and all sorts of horrible things. Here's how you get it right, fellas. And I want to go back and do that. I want to get it right. So we're going to reread the Torah, the, God's book of instruction, not as a bunch of school rules, hmm. but as my handbook for rebuilding my whole life and now i'm searching with humble teachable um, keen eyes to find out what can i learn here how can i change uh, and so you know don't throw out god is pedantic um the jots and the tittles yeah <laughs> Which are... Like people are. Yeah. When you enter into a relationship, I always think of this, you know, when you're going back into a relationship with God and you you want to get the relationship right. And so you go back and go, well, if I love him, then what things does he like? Because, you know, just like you do with your husband or wife, like you, if you if you love them and you're married to them, you want to make them happy. And so you go <laughs> back through and you try and remember... All the things in the past. What does he like? What does she? What does she want? You know. What's she, her favourite colour? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what food does she really like? Where should I take her for the cafes? Like which ones yeah. does she enjoy? What are her favourite flowers? Yeah. You know, and it's that kind of detail. I think, like when you're looking yeah. at the, the the dots and the you yeah. know dotting your eyes and stuff. That's that for me is that kind of paying close enough attention to who God is I, I have to a, pick up those yeah. those. Bits I have and a pieces. friend who I am sure has a card file index of everybody he knows and he's got their birthday what food they did or didn't choose last time they were <laughs> over how they take their coffee just attention to detail and when you walk into his house he remembers everything mm. Ask the names of your grandchildren everything he's interested in the whole person and that's how we've got to look at god yeah um because he knows those details about us <laughs> oh doesn't he and then for me to, to to worry about it's the little things good old john goldsmith mm. god bless him um if you you know if you take care of the little things the big things will take care of themselves so we look at our life and we go i've got to start to get this little detail right and god's torah is there to help me do that yeah now to make sure that we don't just pay attention to detail to get it right yeah <laughs> jesus then go, keeps going on and he he's going to go through a bunch of you have you should have heard and then yeah. quote something 
uh, you shall not well, no, commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not hate, well, everything. Yep. Well, not quite everything, but you know, uh, a nice succinct summary here. He does a series of these. What's he doing as he as he does this? Is he, is he just redefining what the law is, or is he doing something bigger than that? He's giving us he's giving his disciples a workshop. You you've heard this story, you've heard this much of the story, and you've reacted to it the way you've been doing in the past. Let me show you a different way to to read to hear what God is saying. Now that you've got a heart change and your head's on straight, what's God actually saying when He says, "Don't commit murder"? Is he just, you know, he, as, as long as it, you can shoot at the guy and if you miss and you only wound him, you didn't break the law? Is that how we're going to approach God's word? Mm. Or are we going to sit there and go, where was my heart when I loaded my weapon? <laughs> yeah. You know, and if I run that back, that I've, it's my heart that has to change, not my aim. So... You know, if your intention was to kill the guy, you've murdered. You're guilty of murder, whether you were a good shot or not. Mm. Um, but let's go and ask the bigger question: If why did I intend intending to kill him? How does that react? How does God react to that? Here is the image of God, and I want to destroy it. Let me go back. Do you love your enemy? Mm. Do you bring blessings to your enemy? Are you out to destroy or are you out to restore? Jesus came to die to give us, to pay the penalty for our sins so that we'd have our life back when we were his enemies. So this is a different way of, you know, this is the right way to read Torah. Yep. Um, do I go to adultery and say, what can I get away with? <laughs> or do I go to it and say, Where, how do I start to get it right? Yeah. Um, and he just works you through. This is this is a little workshop of how you used to do it wrong, and this is how you do it right. This is God's original intention for how you read Torah. Um, and so, you know, if the thing says don't kill, the flip side of that is protect life. Yeah. Um, and that involves love. Yeah. It actually reminds me of yeah, the multiple times when you're teaching in class to the high school students, and they're like. So how far can I go with my girlfriend? And yeah. You're like, you're asking the wrong question. The real question is, what can you do to love your girlfriend and to love everyone else who's going to interact yeah. with her? And and honour her and honor build her. up like her it's, dignity. It's and... not about how far can I go before I actually break the rule, technically, yeah. you know, drawing a line in the sand. It's actually, it's, it's you need to look closer, more closely at your heart with that yeah. kind of a question to answer that. And I think that's kind of what, what Jesus is doing here as he, as yeah, he goes through this. Yeah, you're looking at it and saying, what can I get away with is how, what can, what's, what's a benefit to me that I want to grab in my mm. greed and lust and everything else? And it's all about me. So rephrase the question. It's all about God. And this is God's person that he made. And the way I treat that person is the way I treat God. It's not about what can I get away with. Yep. It's about how can I get on God's side and build up uh, and bless yeah. When he we started off, he blesses me. Now, how can I go out and be a blessing to them? And that's the whole concept of if you want to be a disciple, you start by God is love, and love is selfless. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, Jay Adams preached a brilliant sermon. He defined love as blood, sweat, tears, and a cross, <laughs> and laying down your life for the person you love. And I think. Yeah, that Matthew five does that um, in redefining the way we read the Bible. Well, now that brings us to the end of this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love if you would leave a review. If you would like to grab the daily notes or the study notes that go along with this episode, head over to trainingforliferedeemed.com slash sixty four. And of course, make sure you hit the subscribe button and come back and join us again for our next episode when we're looking at Matthew chapter 6, continuing our work through Matthew and also currently the Sermon on the Mount.